Hi, this is Nancy Herald, and welcome to my show, High Road to Humanity. In every episode, I tell you powerful true stories filled with great wisdom that you can use in your own life as you strive for a higher road to travel. My featured guests will have their own unique stories to tell that enlighten your mind and your soul. So kick back, relax, and learn the secret to success when you take the high road. Hi, this is Nancy Yerald, and welcome to High Road to Humanity. And I have a very special guest today. Raymond Keller is here, and he's a PhD. And welcome to High Road to Humanity, Raymond. Thank you, Nancy. Much appreciated. I'm just so excited you're here. Before we get into it and I read his bio, I just want you to go, guys know I'm going to do a special um, little, I, I don't want to call it a sermon because I don't want to preach to people, but I'm going to talk about Jesus on Sunday and I'm going to have a little special that I'm going to do. And so I invite everybody to watch and to tune in on Sunday while I talk about Jesus and um, why we have Easter. So I'm going to do that. I just want to bring that up before I bring Raymond on. You know, um, Raymond Andrew Keller II was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and I told him I'm from Ohio too, so that means a lot, and he's a retired professor of history, literature, and lecturer of Greek and Roman culture and civilization and Greco-Roman mythology at um, West Virginia University in Morgantown, West Virginia, so he's also taught various social studies classes. Um, he has also been involved and active in the UFO research since 1967 when he was a reporter I think this is so cool for the Bedford Times Register you guys in his hometown of Bedford Ohio and he uh, did a he was a research associate with Earl J Neff the founder and director of the Cleveland ufology project now Keller established his own group in 1986 the Outer Space International Research and Investigation Society so it's at O S I R I S and he was the publisher and editor um, with Bellerin Star of that organization. And um, it just goes on, you guys. This guy's written all these different books about UFOs. I mean, I can just go on and on about his bio, but... Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And it's always a pleasure to uh, um, uh, be with you and to share this message. Well, I want to know, you know, from the very beginning, okay, so you were growing up in Ohio, you decided to, you work for this newspaper, what got you interested in UFOs? What happened? Well, it was a, a camping trip uh, out to um, Walton Hills, and um, we were coming back uh, as scouts, and uh, there was a UFO that hovered over a railroad trestle, a disc-shaped object. And you yeah. saw it? Yes, and uh, we, we all saw it, and um, uh, I immediately, uh, uh, when I got back, I uh, called the newspaper to, you know, to report it, see if anybody else saw it, and um, uh, they, they did, and um, it was seen all over, uh, all over Northeast Ohio, and um, there was even a, a report in the um, uh, in the Cleveland Plain Dealer and and so forth, and uh, uh, it got me to as a as a reporter for my uh, editor of my high school newspaper, the Fourth Estate, which incidentally, uh, uh, fourteen years after I was th there, Halle Berry was the editor of that same paper. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't know she grew up in Ohio. You know, I grew up in Ohio too. And, and that's what I mentioned to you before the show. There's been a lot of activity throughout the years in Ohio. Why do you think that is? Well, Ohio is the focus of uh, UFO activity. And that's one of the, one of the chapters in uh, book six, um, Flying Saucers in the Venus Legacy is Ohio as the locus of UFO act activity. So I really go into that subject uh, in that particular chapter. But as for my own, uh, my own experiences, uh, I met Earl J. Neff, the director of the Cleveland Ufology Project, started attending meetings with him. Uh, and then um, I learned that he was uh, one of this uh, Elliot Ness's Untouchables team. Oh. 
And uh, he was a sketch artist for El Elliot Ness and uh, also an artist for the Standard Oil Company in, in, uh, later on in Cleveland. But he was the, the uh, first director of the Cleveland Ufology Project and uh, all through the years, and it's perhaps one of the oldest uh, uh, UFO groups uh, around. So I went with him on several investigations and then he helped me to uh, 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 finance the publication of my own UFO magazine. Oh. But that's me in the National Enquirer. That's oh my gosh. 55 years ago. This is the magazine that we published called The Flying Saucer Report. And this is a, an, uh, I'm holding up a photo of an, an object similar to the one that we saw about a thousand feet above a railroad trestle that got me all started in this. And then as I, tried to find out more about UFOs. I, I read books by George Adamski, Howard Menger, and other UFO experiencers back in the day called con contactees. And um, um, I began to exchange uh, publications with a lot of leading ufologists of the day, Coral and Jim Lorenzen of APRO, uh, Gray Barker of, um, uh, Saucers uh, uh, magazine down in down in Clarksburg and so forth. In fact, this article comes from the the Gray Barker collection. He has a whole file. Uh, he had a whole file um, on myself and the flying oh saucers, flying saucer report down there in the uh, in his uh, archives. Right. Hey, if you don't mind, um, I'm just, I hate to go back, but let's go back to Ohio. Why is it such a big hub? Because I know, you know, I'm in New Mexico and I know when we had the Roswell incident, they took him to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So there's a correlation and I'm just curious, what is this, what, why is Ohio the, the hub? If you don't mind well, my, telling us. My theory, my theory is that um, since the Great Lakes, uh, is the largest uh, concentration of fresh water on, on the earth. Okay. This is uh, an attraction to, to extraterrestrials. And not only that, but the, the Great Lakes when seen from space looks like the heart, like the heart of, of, of the earth. And uh, most of the UFOs, when they come into Ohio, they come in on that corridor uh, where you have the, that northern peninsula of, uh, of West Virginia that's extending between uh, Ohio and Pennsylvania, uh, you know, from, from Wheeling up, up that way. Right. They come that way, and then they follow uh, Route 7 or Route 11 all the way up north to, uh, to, to Lake Erie. So that's the... Um, so they go up into Michigan, too. Yeah, oh yes, uh -huh. and, yeah. and this, uh, Project Blue Book, uh, and uh, also MUFON and other groups say yes, Ohio is uh, um, the state with the largest concentration of uh, UFO reports. Well, we, you know, I have to say it's been pretty strange. I grew up in Ohio and Michigan. Now I've I've lived other places, but Ohio and Michigan, and now I've lived in New Mexico for twenty some years. I've been with the ETs the whole time. I mean, oh. Oh, Raven. Yes. Well, I think I think uh, you That's know crazy. Ohio and New Mexico. I just sold some land in New Mexico. Oh, you should have called me. <laughs> in uh, in uh, Dadel, I had. Oh, some well, okay. I don't know Dadel. Up, up in Dadel, it's uh, near uh, Magdalena and. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. It's just right up there, um, near Pie near Pie Town. Up yeah. In the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, Continental Divide. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I bought it was to take um, uh, uh, people on tours to the VLA, the very large array. And you could see that down in the San Augustine Valley from uh, where my land was up on Horse Mountain. Okay. And um, so that was, uh, that was very exciting. Back in, the, back in the 80s, I used to take people on UFO tours so that was part of it. And then also out to uh, the black mailbox, the infamous black mailbox at Rachel, Nevada, 
where the little ail the little alien is located. Oh my gosh! And then up to Mount Ch uh, Shasta. Shasta. Now I have a question, and only ask because I just got back from Sedona, and I had never been. <laughs> and boy, the energy was intense. I mean, you know, I'm a I'm an empath. I don't know if you know that. And so it was just overwhelming for me. I did get to go with Celestine Star out on a watch, and she was wonderful. And we, I did see quite a few ships and it was, a, but that's the first time I've really gotten to, you know, go out on a night watch or sky watch, they call it sky watch. Right. And you go out there and it was cool. It was really neat. I mean, have you played any, or have you done anything in Sedona? I'm sure you have. Oh uh, yes. I was there. Um, I was there two summers ago. Yeah. And, um, it's active there. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Uh, I, I went there to give a talk at the Unity Church. Yeah, that's where I was at the Unity Church. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Small world, huh? Oh, oh yes. Uh, uh, Rob Potter went out there as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I met him out there. Yes, yes, yes. Well, but talk about Sedona a little bit because, I mean, so you've got these different spots, you know, that they go to you know we talked about ohio and michigan a little bit i know a lot here in new mexico are up underneath the ground and a lot are in the mountains from what i know um you can correct me if i'm wrong and then sedona is it again the mountains or what is it that draws them there is it the energy uh, it's it, it's the energy it's known as a vortex area where this is where there's a crossing of ley lines uh unusual uh, electromagnetic disturbances uh, th throughout the area where these uh, vortices mm -hmm. are opening and closing different portals. Okay. It's interesting stuff. Hey, we got to go to commercial break, you guys. I'm here today with Raymond Keller. He's a PhD. He's an expert. We're going to talk about Venus. We're going to talk about love. This is Nancy Earl. This is High Road to Humanity, and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Nancy Earl. This is High Road to Humanity, and I'm here today with Raymond Keller. He's written so many wonderful books. Raymond, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you and how they can get your books right off the bat here. Oh, sure. Um, they can, uh, they can, um, get in touch with me through uh, through Headline Books in Terra Alta, West Virginia, uh, or um, uh, through Rob Potter's site called uh, thepromisereveal.net. And all my books are on, on Amazon. And uh, I can go through and just say a little bit about each. Please. Yes, each please. One. Yes. Uh, the first one is Venus Rising, A Concise History of the Second Planet. You right. see it's uh, well over 300 pages. It's all fully illustrated with, uh, you know, with color photos all, all throughout. And uh, this book has won uh, international awards in uh, Los Angeles and S Southern California book festivals. It's an introduction to the mysteries of the planet Venus through many aspects like theosophy, ufology, uh, as, astrology, many other uh, subjects. The second one is the final countdown, Rockets to Venus. And this is all about the efforts of the various space agencies on Earth to send probes to Venus to discover its mysteries. So we have the United States with the Mariner probes, Magellan probes, the recent Parker probe. Uh, we have uh, uh, Russia, uh, when it was the Soviet, and then when it was the Soviet Union with the Venera probes and the, the, the photographs and uh, 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 radar mapping and so forth. Uh, so uh, Japan with the Akatsuki probe and the European Union with the Venus Express. So I correlate the activities to research and explore Venus along with the um, uh, the, the messages uh, from the Venusians and UFO activity that's taking place here on Earth and what the Venusians and other extraterrestrials were doing in the in the background. Before you get on to the next book, um, how long have we have we been sending or we've been communicating with the Venusians? Oh, oh well, we've been sending space probes there since uh, 1962. I figured. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, well, long as I've been alive. 
what, what I should say, Nancy, about about that, without you know becoming too technical or anything, is that um, uh, there's been 45 space probes that have been sent to Venus so far. Now that's more than the Moon, Mars, the the asteroid belts, or any other planet in, in the in the solar system. So you know when you you think about it. If Venus is the dead, lifeless planet they want us to believe it is, uh, NASA, I call it NASA, N-A-S-A, never a straight answer. You know, then why are they wasting so much time and money on this one planet above uh, uh, all the rest? So, just, you know, just something to, to, to think about. And uh, this, is, this is the third book here, Cosmic Rays, okay, Excellent v Venus Adventure. So this is about... Um, individuals' experiences with uh, Venusians here on Earth, uh, visitations by Venusians and so forth, and uh, correlating angels uh, and, and aliens. So I have a lot of um, interesting material in here. You do, but yeah. That's, that, that's myself on the cover with the, uh, with the Venusian. With the Venusian. I, yeah, and I can't wait to hear how you met the Venusians. <laughs> I want to hear that next. And then this is, um, this is, oh, this is your new book, isn't it? Yeah. The, oh, oh, one more. The, okay. Yeah, this is the fourth book. Okay. The Vast, the Vast Venus Conspiracy. So okay. I, I explore some of these things in detail. Okay. About um, uh, visitations and missions to the Venusians. Here's um, um, Commander Aura Rains in her secret identity on Earth as Evelyn Smith with the uh, radio commentator Long John Neville and some of the secrets of Venus that she revealed. And uh, there's other, um, other photos in here of, of her and- um, She came down to help us then. Yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And some, you know, never before seen photos in here and-, and uh, Really? Well, I'm going to get coming. I'm going to get a couple of your books because I don't, you guys, I didn't have time to grab his books. So I wasn't sure which one the newest one was. Put your newest one out there. It just came out in March, right? Is that correct? Oh, oh yes. It came out in March. Okay. Um, Last month. That's it's new. Before we get to that, there's actually two more. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's seven. There's seven. Books. Oh, there's Lady Columba. Okay. She's the one with the red hat. And right. I want to talk about her. She's from Venus. Yes, this is a, a painting that she did of her cell demonstrating the, the, uh, the, the resurrection process. Um, she was born in 1902 in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Wow. But she, she was a, a seeker of mystic knowledge and a theosophist. She traveled to India, became involved with the independence movement there, traveled throughout Europe and so forth. When she returned to the United States in the 1950s, she moved out to California to uh, Joshua Tree so she could be, be near the contactees at Giant Rock for the Flying Saucer Conventions. But she made this, this, this painting depicts- um, That's amazing. Depicts how, uh, how uh, they download the consciousness um, and then uh, they create, they take a sample of DNA and reconstruct a rejuvenated body like a teenager. And then they, they read down, they, re, they reinsert the consciousness and memory uh, into, the, uh, into the new body. So this is her, uh, her experience there, quite appropriate for um, Easter. But she stayed young. <laughs> Subject for Easter. Yeah. All of her original artwork is in um, is in this book. It's really really cool. Um, let me show you another one here. This is uh, this is an interplanetary spaceship convention. Now she was the secretary to Truman Bathurum, but she had her own UFO contactee experiences. Truman Bathurum was the first one to report meeting Commander Rains. That's Commander Reigns right there with the beret. Okay. And then you see uh, blue avians. Yeah. Uh, you see hybrid bee people and uh, Ganesha uh, elephant beings and so forth. This is Vorton and he's 
um, guiding a meeting of the Interplanetary, uh, Interplanetary Council. This is on a space platform called the Leviathan. It's rising up from the surface of the moon. That's crazy. Can I ask how you met her? Oh, oh yes. Um, I mean, I don't mean to interrupt, but because I know you got, <laughs> but I'm just so <laughs> curious. How did you meet her? Oh, okay. I could actually show that. Uh, show me. Yeah. Show the time. audience. They're That's excited the too. Okay. It'll, it'll just. You want me to screen share? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That'll be good. I'm going okay. to, uh, I'm going to uh, go okay. here and see if I can pull it up on my. Okay. On my. Uh, okay. Let's see. Lady Columbia. That she really interests me. The girls, I, I've seen these when I had Rob Potter on the show, he showed the pictures of the girls with red berets and talked oh, about, oh, okay. yeah. And so, but of course you're the one that knows you've met them. And I just find this fascinating because oh. Venus is the love planet, you guys, while he's looking for this, I'll just say this. And from what I understand, and I don't know a lot, I know that, um, oh, here we go. Talk to us. Okay. This was, um, let's see, I need to go from, uh, we go to here to slideshow. Okay. And then from the current slide. Okay. Okay, is that up? Can you see Yeah, it? we can see it, yeah. Oh, okay. For sure. Uh, so her name was Annabelle Krebs. Okay. And there's the, the picture I was showing in the book. Yeah, it's like the resurrection, isn't it? Yes, well, this was on the 24th of June. Okay. Um, this was uh, on 2017, and it was the 70th anniversary of the arrival of the Age of Flying Saucers. So this was at a small um, uh, New Age gathering uh, at a cabin out in uh, the woods up in Northwest uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, so here's the uh, here's an article from uh, from uh, 70 five years ago about oh, Kenneth wow. Arnold and his encounter with the flying saucers, nine dish shaped objects skipping uh, like saucers above uh, Mount Rainier in Washington state. So I was, uh, I was uh, at this meeting to introduce my two new books, okay. that, which was the final countdown in Cosmic Ray's uh, excellent Venus adventure. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was this huge light in the woods. Oh, wow. Daz dazzling light in the woods. And um, there were three people standing in the, the middle of the light. And uh, there were two gentlemen walking by, walking a dog. And uh, the, the dog was uh, barking furiously and uh, very upset by this, by this light in the woods. Yeah. And um, one of the ladies, uh, there were two ladies and a gentleman, and one of the ladies stepped out of the light and just put her hand on the dog's head and it calmed down, as you see there. Yeah. And uh, they asked them where they're from, um, and they said they were they were from Venus, and they're, they're here to uh, um, help... Um, Dr. Keller inaugurate his new books. And they said, uh, wow. hey, people, what's, what's Venus like? And they said, oh, it's like a paradisical planet. It's what the earth will, will be like thousands of years in the future. Wow. Um, that gave me is, chills, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so this, is, this is me in the Philadelphia Metropolitan Museum of Art. Wow. Um, so I, I was escorted into the into the Venus room. They let me take take pictures there, and I, I gave I gave them a copy of my uh, a copy of my book. And interestingly enough, this painting or this sculpture that you see in the background, this was made by uh, Heinrich Keller, who is a German sculptor. Uh, he uh, from Switzerland, or uh, German speaking from Switzerland, and he made that uh, sculpture in 1799 in Rome. Wow. And uh, then it was in Switzerland and they moved it to uh, uh, Philadelphia. It's still there, uh, you could go. And they have other statues of Venus 
in there too as well. And he you called know. it the Venus sculpture? Um, yes, he called it uh, 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 Venus rising from the sea. Beautiful. And well, the reason I call my book v Venus Rising and the whole series of books is called Venus Rising is because uh, Helena Blavatsky was the co-founder of the Theosophical Society. Uh, the very first thing that she ever wrote of a metaphysical nature was called History of a Planet, uh, which um, 142 years ago, uh, when it came, um, uh, came out, uh, contained all the metaphysical knowledge and revelations pertinent to Venus up to, to that time. Wow. And so I thought that um, being a historian myself and being the Venus historian, that uh, in honor of um, Helena Blavatsky writing history of a planet, I should write a concise history of the second planet. So that's why the book is titled that. Fantastic. So anyway, here's the two ladies. Oh my gosh, there they are. Uh, they, they, they walked into the camp and, they, um, and uh, the security guard was with them and his, his face is turned. His name was Alan. And there, there's me talking to, to, uh, to people just sitting around. Yeah. And here, here they are. This is Lady Columba and La Lady Aurora. What did they say to you? Oh, they said that, um, that they were very pleased to be there and to, uh, um, you know, to answer people's questions and to uh, um, just uh, uh, donate their pre presence there to uh, commemorate the, the uh, uh, inauguration presentation of these books for the first time. Wow. How, I bet you just felt honored. Oh, oh yes, de definitely. Wow. So, so I researched, uh, you know, I researched uh, Annabelle Krebs and she gave me some material that I put in the Lady Columba Revelations book. Mm -hmm. uh, her, her, um, her father was a minister uh, in this reformed church in the in the uh, Philadelphia area, when she uh, after she was born, they moved from Greensburg to 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 Philadelphia. So she had like a religious background. Her, here's her family. Um, this is during the great pandemic. Oh no! When they had the Spanish flu. Right. So. They there's her mother. She ran a boarding house in New York. This was in uh, between some taken sometime between 1918 and 1920. So that's her, and then that's that's her little sister. Uh, here's Helena Blavatsky, and that's the motto of the Theosophical Society. There. I like that. There's no religion higher than truth. Oh, oh yes. Now. What's important about the Theosophical Society is because all the uh, all the ascended masters and the higher te teachers embody the three objects of the, the Theosophical Society, uh, which is to um, uh, accept knowledge from all different uh, religions and fields of research and, and science. And, and uh, the second is to uh, uh, be no respecter of persons with regard to, uh, uh, with regard to uh, uh, sex or place of origin, race, uh, creed, um, to accept all people and, and, you know, and be kind and work for the benefit of humankind. And then the, uh, the third uh, object is to help us to develop the powers that are latent within us. So the Venusians, of course, want us to know that, uh, that, that we're not as hopeless as it, as it seems, that we have many powers within us that we haven't even imagined, uh, let, alone, uh, let alone even started to develop. And you know, when you think about it, uh, um, 
for example, you have many empathic abilities. Um, uh, there are others uh, uh, that have uh, psychic abilities. Uh, some can, um, uh, you know, communicate telepathically. Some have telekinesis. Uh, uh, others are so advanced that they can even bilocate themselves and 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 these things. So the Venusians, you know, they were once as we are now countless eons ago, but they're in the process of developing still, even themselves. So um, so they're here from our sister planet, the closest planet to the earth, you know, to help us move along the same path. I think it's wonderful. This this is Lady Columba working closely with the contactee Truman Bethurum and Buck Nelson, both in intimate touch with the, the Venusians. Buck was originally from Colorado and moved to Missouri. And um, his story, his complete story is in book six, Flying Saucers and the Venus Legacy uh, in my sixth book. And then Truman Bethurum, his story is in my third book, Cosmic Ray's Excellent Venus um, Ad Adventure. Okay. And these guys both uh, spent time with the Venetians. Right. Okay. Yeah, much, 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 much time. Okay. And, uh, Truman even learned how to operate the spacecraft and um, time probes and everything else from uh, from Lady Columba. So his wow. and uh, Commander Rain. So his story is in um, is in that third that third book. Now, uh, Lady Columba apprentices with Lady Aurora to become a master of telepathy and other psychic powers. Um, when she was, uh, when, when she was with uh, uh, Lady Aurora from, from India, uh, they were in the Rishikesh area near the border of, uh, of Nepal. And this is a, this is a site even today uh, where people all over the world uh, travel to, to uh, to, to study different techniques of, of yoga and, and so forth. Now, Lady Columba believed that the earth, like Venus, could become a paradise for all. These are some paintings that she made during the, uh, during the height of the Great, De Great Depression. So, you know, she's giving encouragement to, to people who are suffering and poor. Um, and, um, you know, pointing to the the the, the paradisical uh, mm -hmm. world to come if people would just share what um, uh, what they had with uh, uh, with one another and bless each other instead of uh, you know fighting dog eat dog to um, right right and and so they're operating from the principle of abundance and right. Let, Columba explained that it this way, that rather than fight over the scraps of a, a of a pie, you know, um, it the answer is just to uh, uh, bake more pies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, is it, simple. Yeah, they call it the love planet, and you know, I'm really big into um, right now connecting with the divine, bringing the love in. I, you know, the love vibration is Venus as I imagine it is. Oh, Full of love and compassion. Oh, oh yes, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. And uh, that, that motto is expressed in uh, uh, in in Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse two, that says, "You know, we should always be kind to strangers, for, for know ye not that ye entertain angels." Unaware. That's right. That's right. I agree. I have that on my website. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's terrific. <laughs> Last document, the moon is inhabited, restored to cosmic right. What is this? Okay, this is, um, th this is some of the paintings that she did. Um, um, the book is also uh, Lady Columba, Venus uh, Revelations, is also about uh, her uh, romance, her love affair with the Russian cosmonaut. Oh. And their their travels through outer space together. Oh. So this is this is uh, them together on the moon base Clarion that the Venusians have this base on the 
on the far side of the moon that Commander Orr reigns is um, uh, is the is the commander of. So there's way more on the moon than what we've been told, of course. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. And yes. that's that's all documented um, in my fourth book about what the Venusians have on the moon in the in the last chapter. Uh, when Dr. Hynek was commissioned by uh, President Richard Nixon to find a place for the Apollo uh, Apollo 11 astronauts to land uh, on the moon, they were seeing these uh, from um, from the telescope in New Mexico. They were watching the Aristarchus crater just to the north of the Sea of Tranquility. They were seeing all these weird lights, uh, red lights, and detecting a massive radiation source there. Uh, and, um, and so they said one of the secret missions of Apollo 11 would be to check out, check out these uh, red flashing lights in the Aristarchus crater and find out what's, what's going on up there. Uh, oh, this is Rishikesh, right, right here. This is where, uh, this is where Lady Aurora is from. Okay. Now, did they visit often, or is it just been random, or how has it worked? Well, well, from from time to time, um, our space brothers and sisters do visit various uh, UFO and metaphysical conventions and meetings. Okay. Uh, Often in disguise, so you wouldn't even know that uh, who they were, that, that they were there. Now okay. there are some there are some uh, physical differences, of course. They have extra extra tear duct, and um, uh, they have an extra vertebrae. The, Venet uh, the, the Venetians. Or, yes, uh, but these things aren't uh, uh, aren't immediately noticeable, so they can uh, easily blend in with us. I see. Okay, so the uh, <clears throat> the the ascended masters have long taught the the same message that uh, is uh, brought by the Venusians. The Venusians have sent many avatars to the Earth in many forms over countless millennia. Uh, I should point out that um, uh, Revelation twenty two verse sixteen, where Jesus says that I am the bright and morning star, the, uh, the root and offspring of David. So he identifies with, uh, with the morning star, which is, of course, which is Venus. Which is Venus, wow. Uh, so the, yeah, this is, uh, this, this is um, one of my friends um, who's actually with the, in, in the home of, um, the director of um, uh, the late director of the George Adamski Foundation, and this is the portrait of Orthon, but in full color. This is the original uh, portrait of the extraterrestrial that Adamski encountered. And uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for uh, thank you for your attention in this uh, <laughs> special presentation. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> well, talk about, I, I want to talk a little bit about the angelic realm. I communicate with the angels and um, there, are, I also um, bring in messages from Gabriel and how is, are they connected with Venus as well? How is that all? Oh, oh yes, um, uh, okay. they are. And um, in, um, in the, uh, Venus revelations of um, Lady Columba. This is the last chapter right right here. Advanced okay. civilization on Venus. Of Venus. This okay. is the re the region of, of Venus. Uh, Lord Dismas, otherwise known as the good thief who is with Jesus. Oh, really? And, and these are these are various Venusians being sent to Earth as, as teachers. Okay. They're going, they're going on board a mothership. And uh, what's interesting is um, 
What's very interesting is that um, um, one of those avatars, I don't know if you know about uh, Omnek Ane. No. The, 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 she's the ambassador from, from Venus. And she's, she's written several books herself, a, a Venus trilogy. And uh, her, her team uh, in Germany invited me to go over there. So I'm going in, in her place this summer. Oh my goodness. I'm going to be going to uh, four locations. There are uh, two in Germany, one in Switzerland, and uh, the other one is in Salzburg, uh, Austria. Here's wow. Uh, here's, yeah. And what will you do when you go there? Um, right, well, I'm going to be talking about all my books and uh, answering questions, doing uh, doing presentations and and so forth. So it's going to be. It's going to be very exciting. Well, what's their big message that they oh, tell? Oh, I, for, I forgot to tell you the most important thing. Okay, tell me the most important thing. Uh, Anja Schaefer, who publishes uh, uh, Omnix books and does the Venus Spirituality, Venus Spirit uh, website uh, in, in Germany, uh, she translated the book, uh, the first book, v Venus Rising. She did a German translation of it. Oh wow! It's it's over four hundred pages because we added extra material, and it's going to be introduced during the German uh, during the European tour. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. I, I want to know how your life has changed because of the Venusians. Well, I see. Um, I I see that. Um, this is, a, this is definitely a, a, a better way to go. It offers hope for, for humankind in a period of great, of great stress and turmoil, a turning point for, uh, for, for our civilization. And um, there's, there's so much that, that we can learn about um, uh, higher principles and, and celestial uh, living from these books that mm -hmm. will, will help us move our world along, even if, if but a little bit. Now, you know, with the, the, the Ukraine and all these terrible things that are, um, that are happening now, we know the earth still has a long way to go, but, but um, this doesn't prevent uh, uh, individual awareness and uh, raising of consciousness so that we as light workers can help our fellow beings uh, to better understand each other and 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 uh, and help the situation help improve the situation here yeah. now many people when you read these books you read about Annalise Scarin and Lady Columba and Enoch and all these people of old um, who become uh, translated beings. They've been liter uh, literally changed, some in the twinkling of an eye that have left uh, that have left the physical earth, gone to, to learn many things on Venus and other celestial worlds in the Pleroma, and then they re return to the earth plane right. uh, to help teach us and help uh, humanity help along. Yes. Yes, there are many of us here right now on the planet. Here I am, and here you are. <laughs> and we're here to help humanity. And that's why it's funny. We laugh, but it's the truth. You know, that's why I do this show is to enlighten people, to explain. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking about, you know, when the, when the Ukraine came up. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, Putin could have. I... Uh, he he could have bombarded them with love, you know. The right. Ukraine. Yeah. I mean, he could have sent health missions there. He could have sent. He he could have sent, uh, um, like a peace corps team there. Um, he yeah, could but have we. Done 
Right. But now I'm going to tell you this. I'm just going to, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm going to stop you a minute. You know, I got some messages from Archangel Gabriel and he told me that there were things going on up there, up underneath the ground. I don't want to get into the whole thing on YouTube, but um, there was a reason that he went in there. And I do agree with you. You know, maybe there would have been a better way to do this because Here's what oh, I, yeah. F- yeah, because of humanity, you know, you've got to look at maybe there were some bad people, but there's some good people too. So they all got kind of, in my mind, and you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I think they all got kind of pushed together. Oh, oh yeah, there, there are, there definitely yeah. are forces uh, at, yeah. at work. Mm-hmm. And, but, but, you know, when, when, uh, when we look at um, the first chapter of John, you know, we, we see that, I think it's verse six, one verse six, uh, that the light sh- shines in the darkness, yet the darkness comprehendeth it not. But that doesn't mean that we should, you know, that we uh, should stop, right. stop yeah. trying. Right. Exactly. Right. But we, we, we have to be the light in the world right. and, and not, hide, not hide the light. And, right. and then ho- hopefully people will come to... Uh, a realization of um, uh, of the beauty of this message. Well, and I, I think that I, I have hope for humanity and I have hope for our planet. I really do. I have all of you wonderful people who come on the show. And what I see from everybody is, yes, this will happen. This will occur. There will be a change. I think this is just what I think. And then you tell me what you think. I think this war had to happen so people would wake up. It's one more thing to say, you know, things have to get really bad for people to get it. Unfortunately, it seems like that's how we um, understand things. And it's almost like we have to get really, really bad so we can get really good. And I just have hope. What do you think, Raymond? Oh, oh yeah. So, sometimes, um, sometimes this brinkmanship uh, it's necessary. I mean, people uh, before never gave. Uh, well, you know, after the after the fall of the Soviet Union and everything, and you know, we kind of put the Cold War behind us and forgot about the massive buildup of nuclear missiles and everything. But these are the type of things uh, that can um, not only uh, destroy the earth, but they also affect um, the stability of other planets because, you know, everything in the universe is connected. We have the solar wind connecting all the planets and, and, and so forth. So if we think that this is going to be contained to one world, it's, it, it's, it's not. It's so not. Natural, uh, naturally, our brothers and sisters in space would have an interest in uh, doing all they can, working behind the scenes to to uh, make sure this doesn't happen. Right, they're keeping an eye. They're not going to let it happen, are they? I don't think that they they, they will. Yeah, I don't either. think so either. Now they are here helping. We're here. A lot of us are here helping humanity, but a lot of ETs are here too. A lot of, uh, you know, I I come from the angelic realm. I'm here. I don't mind saying it. You know, I'm here in this body to help humanity. We came down here for a reason. And it's interesting. We're all here. Each and every one of our souls are here at this time to help raise the consciousness. And actually, I think it's an exciting time, Raymond. <laughs> I do, too. I think it really um, it, it, it really is. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, like there, there is no time like the the present and really we have to just seize the seize the day and uh, mm-hmm. when uh, when the, the universe has given us lemons well, we got to make lemonade out of it <laughs> hey, i want to know how you got the name cosmic gray oh okay uh well you know back in that when that national Enquirer article was was written yeah uh the whole the, the, that was before the internet of course in the the mid '60s, mm-hmm. and people didn't, um, you, you know, um, they they didn't generally get to know somebody uh, unless they were appeared in some national forum like that. Mm-hmm. So after that article, you know, I was invited on uh, TV shows in Cleveland, and oh wow, and I, I was interviewed by. Uh, 
um, different magazines, uh, some church magazine out in California um, and some different things. So people knew, uh, began to know who, who I was and everybody at, at high school called me my favorite Martian. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. That was at that time, that, wasn't it? Okay. Uh, that was a, a TV show. On yeah. The it was kind of like Resident Alien, but it was with uh, Ray Walston as the Martian and Bill Bixby as a as his friend that 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 he lived with in this boarding house. Yeah, I so remember. They, well, I've they, seen the Martian. the reruns or whatever of that. That's so funny that you would say that. And then after <laughs> after the show was over, but I still was, you know, people know me because I published this Flying Saucer magazine. So they they just uh, array. Cosmic, well, cosmic ray. Cosmic ray. So, um, okay, you're the cosmic ray. So, I, like, I feel like I'm some kind of superhero. You know? <laughs> I love it. I love it. What I want before we get out of here today, a couple things I want to ask you. One is, can you tell us one of your favorite stories about the Venetians before you leave today? Oh yeah, um, yes. Well, my first. Uh, open encounter took place at Mount Shasta in 1987. I went there with uh, Clayton Parker and a group from Salt Lake City. We had uh, 14 chapters worldwide of OSIRIS, our UFO group, Outer Space International Research and Investigation Society. And we were going to follow Clayton. Uh, he was 87 years old at the time, born in 1900. He was a friend of a, a, a prophetess in Utah um, by the name of Annalise Scarron. She was born in American Falls, Idaho, one year before Clayton was. And um, she, had, uh, she had ascended uh, to, to Venus, translated to Venus from, from Mount Shasta. But anyway, um, Clayton said, we're gonna go to Mount Shasta and meet this ascended master. So, um, you know, it, we, we were kind of dubious because we were, you know, we were ufologists interested in, in, in UFOs, um, but pretty much on the nuts and bolts side of it. You know, right. Like, <laughs> like, you know, I'm from Missouri, show me kind of attitude. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but, you know, well, we wanted to go to Mount Shasta anyway, so we went. And, uh, a lot of really unique, experiences happened along the way uh, to kind of confirm that something special, really special is going to happen. So we got there at the base of the mountain, we parked our cars and everything and formed a group. Then Clayton said, he can't go with us, but if we follow this path up um, uh, as, as far as it would go, we were going to meet an ascended master. So we started climbing and we got above the tree line and um, we sat down by a cropping of rocks and, um, and um, there was a spring of water coming out there. So we all sat down to get some, get some water. And then there was a, uh, like a flash of light and, and a woman in white with a gold, gold braid around her, uh, her, her neck and her and her arms uh, and her at the bottom of, of her feet. Um, she just appeared in this flash, this flash of light. And uh, she said uh, her name was Lady Ankara, that we shouldn't be afraid and she was gonna answer our questions about flying saucers. Uh, she, she knew why we were there and, and um, so wow. she told us. Uh, <laughs> She, she said she was in a bilocation signal uh, from a Venusian colony on a planet called Balaton in the Sirius star sector. And she said it was about three times the size of the earth. It was largely fresh water and mountainous. And uh, that if we looked up the sides of the mountain, Mount Chasta, that is, we'd be able to see the indigenous inhabitants of Balaton that are these large mantids, praying mantises, going up and down, up and down the mountainside. And we did, we all, we all saw it. 
and uh, she said that the that the women there communicate with the the man mantids telepathically. They put their left arm or the left hand on the head of the mantids, and that the mantids control these stargates and open and close them and everything. Wow. And then uh, late later on, uh, uh, Clayton showed showed us. Um, Uh, a, a papyrus, an Egyptian papyrus uh, that has the, the mantids in the center. And, and they're then, opening, they're opening and closing the stargates. That's what they do. Uh -huh. And then all of the numbers represented by in these other cartouches or collections encased of uh, hieroglyphs, all the numbers represent uh, different star systems that are connected through these uh, through these different gates to the great central sun, which is called the Kolob. And so the this is from the first Venus book. And so the interpretation of of the papyrus is in this. That's uh, fantastic. In this book. That's fantastic. So well, she answered. She, how long did she stay and answer questions for for everybody? Um, she, she was there for three whole hours. And oh then my goodness. Kay Studstrup, who was the, um, uh, we met in, in her home in Murray, Utah. She, um, she asked if she could take a picture uh, of Lady and Cara and us. And um, uh, she said that that would be all right. And so we all gathered around her and everything. And then um, when, uh, she took the picture. And then when we got back to, to Utah, Kay ran into a photo mark, uh, a one hour photo mark and developed the picture. And we were all around, grouped around in this circle, but there wasn't- He wasn't any, there. <laughs> anything in the, in, in the middle. And then oh we my asked gosh. Clayton about it. And Clayton said, well, that, that, um, that lady that we saw, Lady Ankara was, was actually Annalise Scarin. And um, the reason that we can't couldn't see her is because her body has now assumed uh, a lighter density. And if he said, you know, in, in the in the Bible, in the First Corinthians chapter fifteen, it talks about different kinds of bodies that and uh, kind of light bodies that we have following our physical life uh, on the earth. So he said that was a lighter density uh, uh, body moving at a much higher vibration so that, that that light just goes through it. It's just transparent. Yeah, it couldn't take, it couldn't capture her. That's interesting. Wow. What a cool story. Hey, what do you <laughs> want to leave us with today, Raymond? I mean, I know, let me, before we get out of here, let me just say, you're going to be in Mount Shasta. I know Rob Potter has an event. I like to promote the events that he has. He's a nice guy. He's been on my show. You're going to be there. When is this? Talk about this. Uh, yes, I will. I will definitely be there. And it's, um, uh, I don't have the date. I, it's in July. But if you just go to The Promise Revealed. I'm looking to see if net. I have it. The Promise Revealed. Revealed dot net. Net. And you can find it. Yeah. And he's. Yes, um, it, it's, it's called. Um, uh, uh, look to Venus Morning Star Revelations. Look to Venus Morning Star Revelations. It'll be in Mount Shasta. I think it's in like the second week of July. Um, and to, to find out more, just go to thepromisereveal.net and you could get tickets. And uh, I'll be there. Laura Eisenhower will be there. Um, uh, uh, Frank Chile. Uh, who's done a lot of research on Valley and Thor and everything? He'll be there. There'll be so many, uh, so many people from uh, uh, the UFO Experiencer Universe will yeah. will be there to share information with you. Well, thank you for being here today. It is Good Friday. I'm going to put this out tomorrow on Saturday, but happy Good Friday to you. And what a what a nice thing for you to bring um, Jesus into this, that he came from Venus, which totally makes sense because they, of course, would send someone down here to teach us love. Oh, 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 yes, yes. And um, 
maybe I could read something uh, out of, uh, I wrote um, uh, four books, a translation, I call it the Morning Star translation mm -hmm. of um, uh, some Gnostic texts. Now at Nag Hammadi in Egypt, um, in 1945, they uncovered these texts and they were from this, the second century when, uh, you know, at that time, the, the, the church uh, had many different centers, but the four largest centers were in uh, Alexandria, Corinth, Rome, and Jerusalem. And of course, the one in Alexandria was the focus of the uh, uh, Gnostic activity. So there were different churches and they had various texts. And for some reason, they felt impelled um, to, to hide these texts. If that so was the Gnostic to... Gospels, right? The Gnostic Gospels. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I have a, I have a copy, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, but tell and, uh, me, tell the story. I just oh, find okay. this fascinating. Well, with the, uh, you know, when you read the Gnostic Gospels as they are now, yeah. translated from the Nag Hammadi, mm -hmm. because of the, of their age, there were all kinds of gaps in them. Okay. Uh, these gaps are called by Bible experts and translators, they call them lacunas. So I decided that I would try to fill these lac lacunas in. So um, I, I had a friend, um, Tatiana Irvin, uh, and she was a friend uh, and a relative. She was a direct relative of Annalise Scarron. And then I have all of Annalise Scarron's writings and so forth. So using information from both sides of the veil, I decided to fill in the lacunas. Uh, and so I have the I have the infancy gospel of Jesus, the gospel of Thomas, the acts of Thomas, and the gospel of, of Mary Magdalene. And it's... Uh, um, what are you going to read us today? Oh, okay. What I'll do is uh, I'll read the... Uh, I'll read uh, 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 maybe a little section out of, out of each. They're illustrated by Dan Gorman. Um, he's an illustrator for Marvel comic books. And he did the illustrations for each, uh, one for each uh, for each chapter. So I'll read like one verse out of each uh, okay. out of each of the books, and uh, uh, in commemoration for the the, the season. Um, it's still you. you know waiting to be published by Headline Books because they haven't um, you know caught up with the uh, supply right. Right. supply chain crisis and the paper shortage and everything but uh, uh uh rob potter has some uh at the promise revealed uh dot net where people can can get the, get them so let's see if i can um pull up some here thank you that's really nice to do this for the holiday i think it's wonderful okay um so we go we're blessed, Raymond, that you're here today. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Yes. Screen share. And okay. Okay, this is the first one. Oh, I love it. Gospel of Young this Jesus. Is the, this is the Gospel of the Young Jesus. And uh, so um, we learn that uh, in all of these from the Gnostic texts, the Acts of Thomas, the Gospel of Thomas, and the, the, the infancy gospel that Jesus had a twin brother, uh, uh, Judas Thomas Didymus. Didymus means the, the, the twin. Okay. And so it's confirmed and it's actually confirmed in the in the text. Wow. And guardian, see. I see the guardian angel. Oh, okay. I'll read, I'll read that one. Okay. Now, now the son of Annas, the rabbi, was among the other children of Nazareth, standing on the bank of the stream, along with our father, Joseph. The boy was a few years older than Jesus and I, and as he was screaming at Jesus, calling him all manner of wicked names, I immediately began 
to suspect that he was going to charge into my brother and start a fight with him. This older boy snapped a branch from a willow tree overhanging the stream bank. He pushed my brother down into the water and then began to stir up the mud at the bottom of the ford with it, messing up the pure waters. Jesus, of course, became quite upset. Picking himself out of the ford, he said to the bully, you should be ashamed of yourself, you irreverent oak. What did the pools of the water do to harm you? Upon hearing this, I pushed the rabbi's son into a nearby thicket trying to keep him from doing harm to my brother. Just as I was about to pounce on the fallen lad, the rabbi and Joseph intervened and kept us apart. Joseph then took us home, and uh, as did the rabbi take his son back to their own house. The next day, however, the older child developed a severe irritating rash all over his body. His eyes were also inflamed. The rabbi brought his son to our house, accusing our father and asking him, what kind of child do you have who does such things? Thinking that Jesus perhaps had put a curse on him. Don't be ridiculous, Rabbi Annas replied Joseph. Your son fell into the thicket of oleander that grows along the bank. He probably rubbed his skin along its sap and is only suffering an allergic reaction. The rabbi left our home in a huff saying he didn't believe a word that Joseph was saying and swearing that Jesus was an evil spawn. Mother Mary put her arms around me and said, thank you, Thomas, for protecting Jesus. Continue to keep an eye on your brother as I believe that God sent you to this world to be his guardian angel. Oh. I will, I promise. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. That is amazing. And so, let me understand this fully so the audience understands too. So you took the Gnostic Gospels and then you took the information that was provided to you and you filled in the blanks is what you've done. Yes. Exactly. That's wonderful. That's fabulous. Thank and, you. Uh, is there any other you want to read before we get oh, out of here today? Oh, yeah, I could read. Um, uh, read us one more before we go. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I thought this one was really interesting too. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Let's. Let's uh, get that. Gosh, Raymond, we're going to have to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> we could sit here to... and talk about this stuff forever. <laughs> Honestly, I could do five, six, four shows. <laughs> wow. It's good information. You know, people need to hear this stuff. People need to understand, you know, I think we've been kept in the dark for so long. Don't you think so, Raymond? I, I think so. It's time. Okay. This is uh, from the Gospel of Thomas. Wonderful. Doubting, the, doubting Thomas. Yes. Yes. Okay. This is at the end of it, okay. which is really, this is really a cool part. Awesome. Thank you for sharing uh, this. Let's, oh, you're, you're, you're quite welcome. I, how do I get this, rotate this thing up here? Oh, there we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. Okay. So here's, uh, here's Dan's drawing. Beautiful. Jesus sitting with Mary Magdalene on his left, and then the other apostles around. So what's interesting about this gospel is it treats Mary Magdalene as the 13th apostle. Which I think she was. <laughs> and here's, sec, sec, see how each, everything is footnoted in here. Yeah. Intricate detail according to the Bible. Wonderful. Other Gnostic text, and then... Um, uh, the writings of uh, of Annalise Scarin. So we're just waiting for this to come out, correct? Oh yeah, yeah. We're just wait, we're just waiting on it for it to be published. This will be fantastic. I'll have you back when this comes out. Th thank you. Yeah. So here's the here's the last section, which is really interesting. Okay. So I'll read the the two the two uh, the two last sections here. There's 99 sections in the Gospel of Thomas. So here's, here's the uh, section 98, thy kingdom come. The disciples inquired of the master, when will the kingdom come? Jesus replied, it will not get here any sooner by waiting for its arrival. It will not be a matter of simply saying, here it is, or there it is. 
Rather, the kingdom of the Father is spread out over the entirety of the earth, but there be few who actually see it. And then section 99, Peter's dispute with Mary Magdalene. This is very interesting. Simon Peter urged the other disciples to expel Mary Magdalene from their band, saying, we should ask Mary to leave us, for women have no part in the work of the brethren, let alone fellowship. Jesus, overhearing this remark, said to Peter, have no qualms about Mary, for I have found her worthy of the work. Know ye not that the Father created man and woman in his image, male and female created he them. Like yourself, Mary possesses a living spirit. All spirits that enter the kingdom of heaven are equal in the eyes of the Father of lights. Well, they changed it in the Bible, didn't they? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. And, uh, so that, in, that inspired me to write the book about, uh, about Mary Magdalene. Right. And uh, let's see if I can bring that one up. Okay. And uh, Okay, so the, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, Lee, uh, can you see that one? No, not yet. Oh, oh okay. Let's see. I have to. Uh, I'm really glad you're sharing this with us. What a perfect um, weekend to share this information. Oh. Oh, yes. See, this is Dan Strong. Oh, wow. This is Mary Magdalene. And it ties in nicely with that last verse from, from the Gospel of Thomas. And um, so uh, I can read like one. Uh, oh, read. Yeah, read what you think is important that the audience would want to hear. Okay, um, uh, let's see. I'll just read from any part right here. Okay, That's this fine. is, uh, Peter was grateful to the master for the revelations of the eternal realms that he provided to him and the other apostles. Then Peter had another question for Jesus. Please tell us, master, what constitutes sin in the world? Um, Jesus said there is no sin per se to be found in the natural order of the world but when we stray from the illumined path by committing adultery or other actions contrary to the decalogue we retard our own spiritual progress for this reason it pleased the father of lights to send me to the world to awaken you to the presence of his flame of truth that abides in your heart i came into your midst to set a torch before you and reset your feet upon the illumined path. That's wonderful because it's true, isn't it? Yeah. He, he came here to wake us up. Definitely, definitely. Wow. That is, wow. I'm going to have to have you back and we'll have to go over this. <laughs> Raymond, thank you for coming on the show today. I can't thank you enough. And all the work you've done over the years, my goodness. Well, thank you so much, Nancy. I appreciate the opportunity to share this information. And yeah. I, you, you and yours and all the audience out there have a very wonderful Easter. Thank you. You guys, this is um, the work of Raymond A. Keller. He's a PhD. Raymond, thanks again. You guys, thanks for joining us. This is Nancy Yearout. If you want a psychic reading, if you want an angel reading, go to my website, nancyyearout.com, and I'm happy to spend some time with you. I hope you guys have a terrific Holiday Easter weekend and God bless everyone. Take care. Connect the dots, keep the motion, can achieve your goal. Let's hit the high road. Hey, you guys, join me next week on The High Road for more stories filled with wisdom, love, and hope for our future. Have a fabulous week and know that by staying on the high road, you will make it to your destination. Visit my website, nancyyearout.com, where you can book a private session to learn how to tap into your own abilities. And check out my YouTube channel. It's Nancy Yearout's High Road to Humanity. You can achieve your goal.